to that. Yeah, I'm sure chat. we'll be fine. We can just chat. Okay. So, oh, well, good morning. Good morning. It's I have to say, what an, what an honor it is to be here. The honor is all yours. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm feeling a bit peckish this morning. I mean, so far I've had a couple selfies, got some coffee, but, but it, well, I am thrilled to be here with Mr. Christopher Webb. Well, Welcome. I, I hope you don't eat people. Of I course have, not. I have to say, when I when I watched your interview with um, Josh Kaplan, he looked decidedly nervous, and I, I did wonder whether you were a, one of those kind of bears that, that eat people. You know, it's interesting. Uh, Josh was especially nervous for some reason because he thought he was going to laugh. Then he found that I was a hard-hitting journalist who <laughs> actually asked meaningful, insightful questions. Uh, well, kind of. And yeah. uh, no, I, I, I try to treat everybody with respect and understanding. Marco was tough because he's Mr. Dax. Yeah. And, you know, that, that yeah. becomes tough. Well, you're Mr. M, right? Uh, like oh, Mr. I, I, M? I guess so. I guess so. So yeah, I like to think I'm a kind of jack of all trades, maybe master of none, but you know, I, I like my M, definitely. <laughs> you know, I was going to make a James Bond joke here, but it feels too on the nose, you know, with M and the British <laughs> accent and everything, so I'll let it go. But can you talk a little bit about what M is? Like, you know, people have heard of M, but they don't know, like, oftentimes they're confused. Like, what do you mean, M? I know, I've heard of Dax, but not M. Well, I mean, if you ever heard the phrase of yet another bloody language, I suppose that's what M is. It's it's like a, another I language haven't, but for I'll, people. I'll, go, to, I'll pretend I did. Actually, yeah, that, that's probably going to ruin the rating of this video <laughs> now, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it'll be rated M. All right, all right. Yes, yes. All right, cover your ears. <laughs> Please don't touch me. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. All right. Yes. So it, it's the other language of Power BI. It's, it's the language of Power Query. Um, everything you do in the Power Query editor in Power BI Desktop, in Excel, and now in you know, data flows, flow, um, uh, those wrangling data flows we've got in Azure Data Factory, everywhere where Power Query is appearing, that all gets translated into M, and M, M is where all, all of the kind of cool stuff uh, happens. Yeah, no, no, it's interesting. I have heard of Power Query, and uh, but I have heard some folks um, uh, complain about M's performance sometimes. Is that is that well, a fact? Um, I think that might be a valid criticism. Ooh. Um, it, it is it is something that people talk about quite mm. a lot. Um, you know, there there are things that you can do to improve performance, um, and you know, it's not always bad. Um, it's uh, there, there are situations where the Power Query engine. Yeah, that, that does all of the work. Sometimes queries the data source maybe more than once, Ooh, uh, and that, that can good. be bad when you're working with not large good, amounts no. of data. Um, but uh, you know, I, generally speaking, it, it's not not too bad. Um, but you know, uh, you're speaking to somebody who up until last week was a, an independent consultant, and you know, doing performance tuning, doing anything that's um, that's going to kind of make stuff faster. You've got to have opportunities like this. <laughs> oh, so we should keep that. That's a very bad idea. <laughs> we, we want our customers to be successful, independent of uh, needing absolutely. consultants. Well, yes, absolutely. Of course. But I think and, it's always know, good to have an expert. Yeah, and of course, most of the time it works absolutely fine. Yes. So nice save, uh, no, well done. <laughs> but so uh, it's interesting. I have an in on the Paginet Report team, mm -hmm. and I know the uh, engineering manager there, and he often uh, talks about how sometimes um, M get, can get in the middle, and you want that direct connectivity, say SQL or other things, and that he worries about M or DAX sometimes causing performances from mm. Paginet reports. Mm, well, you know that, that's true, and I know people who work in the analysis services spe space, uh, you know, and um, well, the Power Query engines inside analysis services mm -hmm. tabular now. Uh, you know, a lot of people kind of bypass M and just go back to go back directly to the data source, and you know that, that's fine as well. I, gu I guess the thing is, you've got to understand that Power Query and M. They're there for the self-service scenarios for the people who are not going to be able to write th write those queries. So yes, no. if you can write your own queries, that's great. But if you can't, well, mm, you know, having um, a hand doesn't yeah, count. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And you know, if if I kind of go onto the attack rather than the defensive, oh, okay. Um, you know, you, you kind of have to ask. Well, um, you know, report builder, which was um, let's face it, you know, a, a very early stab by Microsoft at the kind of self-service report building tool. You know, it um, it solved the problem of of kind of drag and drop to you know put your graphs and charts, but uh, you know it 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 fell on the hurdle of oh that's a stare. <laughs> it fell at the hurdle of um, being able to kind of do 
Oh, I feel I <laughs> <laughs> fell at the hurdle. I'm just a stuffed bear. Relax. <laughs> well, yeah, they, 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 I, I don't want to be savaged by a stuffed bear on YouTube. <laughs> I assure you, it'll be fine. Oh, the clicks, though, the clicks. Anyway, anyway, let me get back to being rude and offensive. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know, report builder. Where did it fail? It, it failed for the people who couldn't write SQL, and you know. At, at that point, and I've long had a dream, wouldn't it be great if there was Power Query integration in Power BI Report Builder? You know, what if we had the Power Query UI in there? So you know, I'm going to I'm going to give you a little bit of news here. Mm -hmm. One of the top items on the backlog right now is M integration with Power BI Report Builder. Wow! Yeah, right. see that that would make me very happy. Well, but I will show you the spec. I have an in maybe, oh, so we could potentially talk about that. But no, that would be something again. Opening up Power BI Report Builder to many many users mm. and allowing them to create their own M queries. Mm. And you know what else is interesting? Mm -hmm. uh, in the early prototype, we have working. Uh, parameters with M. Oh, you see, I've always wanted that. I've always Ooh. thought, you know, reporting services, well, paginated, sorry, paginated report parameters being passed to M parameters, that, that, that would make me uh, overjoyed. Well, maybe I can show you a prototype if you apologize. Oh, I, I humbly <laughs> apologize. I humbly apologize. You've like gone right up uh, in my oh, estimation that's good. <laughs> now. Wow, I started and, and, really low. I didn't realize. And you know, I, I, I think that would be really useful for yes. paginated reports because yes. there, there's one complaint that I hear very regularly from people who use Power BI. Now, you know, Power BI is a kind of model-based tool. You've got to build mm -hmm. your model um, before you do it. And you know, a lot of people who are coming from other BI tools, like reporting services, for example, say, can't I just like call a web service or a stored mm -hmm. procedure to get my data mm -hmm. when I call it. And you know, you can't do that nope. with um, with nope. Power BI. But with paginated reports, especially with like Power Query integration, that's gonna be like a prime use case for absolutely. paginated reports that, that you know that, that regular Power BI can't do. No, absolutely. Yeah, no. no. The stored procedure, it's amazing how many people use stored procedures with reporting mm. services. Now absolutely. a lot of people it's hard to it's hard to explain to other folks who are not as familiar with the technology just how popular and useful that is for those mm, use cases. Mm. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about something you are famous or maybe infamous for, which mm. is a blog post in, say, 2011, where you said that uh, Microsoft announced MDX is dead. And uh, <laughs> uh, that, that caused a lot of consternation, apparently, on the yes. product team. Did you, do, you, yeah. do you have any insights into that episode? Um, yes. Um, <laughs> it very, very, very almost um, ended up with my career being dead as oh, well. Oh, um, don't say that. Well, yes. There, there, there was some backlash, maybe. Oh, is that right? Um, yes. Um, it, was, it was also inspired in part by some Microsoft employees who are no longer Microsoft employees, mm. well, not as a result of this. Yes. Who, um, then, you know, they, they, were, they were maybe kind of tipping me off to, to say that. But, um, you know, uh, it was an interesting episode. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, I thought I was being fairly reasoned. Um, and fairly fair-minded, and if you look back, well, uh, let's see what's happened in multidimensional in the last ten years. Um, <laughs> you know, I still, I, I still love multidimensional, but I, I kind of have moved on. I've come to terms with it. Mm. It was, um, you know, it was a, a prime case of, you know, your your kind of first love in technology you know, being kind of um, sidelined a little bit. So it was, I was I was a bit emotional and perhaps uh, perhaps a little bit over the top. Well, it's kind of like me with Report Builder 1.0. Oh, how I miss report models. Yeah. Oh, they were so so. Oh, well, like we kind of have something similar with yeah, uh, with uh, tabular. I know. Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes you just have to kind of like grow or grow up kind of let go move beyond your kind of first loves of technology and th there's always going to be some emotion there yes um, um but um you know you just have to move beyond it oh and it, you know it helps that um power bi came came along and, and was successful yes so um yes well, no that definitely did help after a little bit of a gap um but <laughs> <laughs> i have to say mr chris webb i i'm finding that people named chris are very very f uh, upfront with their Feedback. Mm. <laughs> they're very yeah, I, I, truth tellers. Yes, I, I generally think people what people call Chris are generally the best kind. Of I people, agree. Actually. I tend to agree. Yes, yes. So I think we can all agree that Chris's are the best BI professionals. Well, absolutely, without <laughs> a doubt, without a doubt. 
<laughs> okay. Oh well. Uh, so, um, so what? What? As we mentioned, multi-dimensional. One thing that comes mm. up quite a bit is we should go build a multi-dimensional offering like Azure Analysis Services, or mm. make that part of Azure Analysis. What do yeah. you think about that? Well, you know, you would probably think that I would be the first person to yes. say yes. We should have that. Or Alejandro uh, Leguizamo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm, I'm kind of ambivalent <gasps> um, because. You know, now I work for Microsoft, I understand the kind of issues of competing demands and resources. And, um, you know, where, where perhaps there is a, a kind of clear distinction between, you know, what Power BI can do and what paginated reports can do, and both of those are, are necessary in my opinion. You know, with multidimensional, I think that there's still a kind of distinction between what tabular can do and multidimensional can mm -hmm. do. But I kind of think that if you were going to spend a whole lot of time and money um, putting multidimensional on the cloud, wouldn't that be better adding stuff to tabula to kind of make um, yeah. people being able to migrate away from multidimensional to tabula? I, you know, I, I'm kind of in two minds about it. But you know, as soon as like calculation groups come out with um, you know the new version of analysis services, that that's a that's something I'm kind of super excited about. Actually, that's the first time I've been able to say that as a Microsoft employee. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, super excited. It's yeah. a milestone, isn't it? <laughs> um, but, um, you know, calculation groups, there are a couple of other things that I think you could add that would then mean that maybe it would be feasible to migrate from multidimensional to tabular. Um, you know, uh, but at the same time... Right I, back. I have, oh, sorry. Right. Well, yeah, right back. Um, like proper data translations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, calculation groups are good for some calculations, but you know, scope statements in MDX, mm -hmm. even though not many people liked and used MDX. That's very true. Um, um, but um, you know, I still love MDX, and I can still understand why you know, there are some types of calculation that are, are feasible in MDX that are not really feasible in DAX, mm -hmm. and you know, Adding some extra calculation features would make DAX better, allow you to migrate. Mm, you know, I mean, I, I, I would be overjoyed if it turned out to be super easy to put multidimensional as a, as a kind of workload in premium. And I, I believe you've had those conversations with, um, um, with Amin Etz and Josh Kaplan. Um, mm -hmm. For me, uh, if, it, if, it, if it was easy to do that, um, then yes. And I think it would certainly make it easy for customers to migrate their multidimensional instances to Power BI, and that, that would be a good thing. Um, but you know, I, I kind of love Power BI as well now, and I love Tabula. And I would also like to see Tabula be able to do everything that multidimensional can do, and even more. So uh, it, it's a tricky one. It's probably above my pay grade to make that mm -hmm. decision. Well, but I can understand it's not easy. No, thanks for that concise answer. That was very, oh wait, no, you're still going. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> so, sorry, okay. So uh, actually, um, I think we're out of time mm -hmm. because uh, you know I really do try to keep these to about 15, 20 minutes or so. Yes. But this was, this was great. I actually, you were an excellent guest because you. you're very chatty mm -hmm. and you have a lot of insights into some of the areas that Pedro mm -hmm. Bear is less familiar with. But mm -hmm. so this was great. Was can, you, can you edit out those bits where I was rude, please? Absolutely not. Because I because I, I don't want to lose you my signed job a waiver. in the first, like, <laughs> first week. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. It was very nice to it's meet you, Chris. It's been my pleasure. This oh. is like, you know, this is like meeting Satya and Scott Guthrie and Scott Hanselman all rolled into one <laughs> and better. Thank you. Wow, that's high praise coming from somebody who's been here a week. Okay. So, thank you very much. It's been, it's been great.